Picture Show by Siegfried Sassoon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Picture Show And still they come and go, and this is all I know, that from the gloom I watch an endless picture show, where wild or listless faces flicker on their way, with glad or grievous hearts, I'll never understand, because time spins so fast, and they've no time to stay beyond the moment's gesture of a lifted hand. And still, between the shadow and the blinding flame, the brave despair of men flings onward, ever the same as in those doom-lit years that wait them, and have been, and life is just the picture dancing on a screen. Reconciliation When you are standing at your hero's grave, or near some homeless village where he died, remember, through your heart's rekindling pride, the German soldiers who were loyal and brave. Men fought like brutes, and hideous things were done, and you have nourished hatred, harsh and blind. But in that Golgotha perhaps you'll find the mothers of the men who killed your son. November 1918 Concert Party Egyptian Base Camp They are gathering round, out of the twilight, over the grey-blue sand. Shoals of low-jargoning men drift inward to the sound. The jangle and throb of a piano, tum-ti-tum, drawn by a lamp they come out of the glittering lines of their tents, over the shuffling sands. Oh, sing us the songs, the songs of our own land, you warbling ladies in white. Dimness conceals the hunger in our faces, this wall of faces risen out of the night, these eyes that keep their memories of the places so long beyond their sight. Jaded and gay, the ladies sing, and the chap in brown tilts his gray hat, jaunty and lean and pale he rattles the keys some actor bloke from town god send you home and then a long long trail i hear you calling me in dixieland sing slowly now the chorus one by one we hear them drink them till the concert's done silent i watch the shadowy mass of soldiers stand silent they drift away over the glimmering sand. Kentara, April 1918 Night on the Convoy, Alexandria, Marseille Out in the blustering darkness, On the deck a gleam of stars looks down, Long blurs of black, the lean destroyers, Level with our track, plunging and stealing, Watch the perilous way through backward racing seas and caverns of chill spray. One sentry by the davits in the gloom stands mute. The boat heaves onward through the night. Shrouded is every chink of cap and light, and sluiced by floundering waves that hiss and boom and crash like guns, the troop ship shudders, doom. Now something at my feet stirs with a sigh. And slowly growing used to groping dark, I know that the hurricane deck, down all its length, is heaped and spread with lads in sprawling strength, blanketed soldiers sleeping. In the stark danger of life at war, they lie so still, all prostrate and defenseless, head by head. And I remember Arras, in that hill, where dumb with pain I stumbled among the dead. We are going home, the troop ship. In a thrill of fiery chambered anguish throbs and rolls. We are going home. Victims. Three thousand souls. May 1918. The Dugout. Why do you lie with your legs ungainly huddled and one arm bent across your sullen, cold, exhausted face? It hurts my heart to watch you deep-shadowed from the candle's guttering gold, 
and you wonder why I shake you by the shoulder. Drowsy, you mumble and sigh and turn your head. You are too young to fall asleep forever, and when you sleep you remind me of the dead. St. Venant, July 1918 Battalion Relief Fall in, now get a move on. Curse the rain. We splash away along the straggling village, out to the flat, rich country, green with June, and sunset flares across wet crops and tillage, blazing with splendor patches. Harvest soon, up in the line. Perhaps the war be done by Christmas Day. Keep smiling, then, old son. Here's the canal. It's dusk. We cross the bridge. Lead on there by platoons. The lines aglare with shell fire through the poplars, distant rattle of rifles and machine guns. Fritz is there. Christ ain't it lively, sergeant. Isn't it a battle? More rain. The lightning blinks and thunder rumbles. There's overhead artillery. Some chap grumbles. What's all this mob at the crossroads? Where are the guides? Lead on with number one. And off they go. Three-minute intervals. Poor blundering files, sweating and blindly burdened. Who's to know if death will catch them in those two dark miles? More rain. Lead on headquarters. That's the lot. What's that? Oh, Sergeant Major, don't get shot. And tell me, have we won this war or not? In an underground dressing station. Quietly they set their burden down. He tried to grin, moaned, moved his head from side to side. He gripped the stretcher, stiffened, glared, and screamed, Oh, put my leg down, Dr. Do. He'd got a bullet in his ankle, and he'd been shot horribly through the guts. The surgeon seemed so kind and gentle, saying above that, crying, You must keep still, my lad. But he was dying. I stood with the dead. I stood with the dead, so forsaken and still. When dawn was gray, I stood with the dead. And my slow heart said, You must kill, you must kill. Soldier, soldier, morning is red. On the shapes of the slain and their crumbled disgrace, I stared for a while through the thin cold rain. O oh, lad that I loved, there is rain on your face, and your eyes are blurred and sick like the plain. I stood with the dead. They were dead, they were dead. My heart and my head beat a march of dismay, and gusts of the wind came dulled by the guns. Fall in, I shouted, fall in for your pay. Memorial Tablet Great War Squire nagged and bullied till I went to fight, under Lord Derby's scheme. I died in hell. They called it Pashendal. My wound was slight, and I was hobbling back, and then a shell burst slick upon the duckboards, so I fell into the bottomless mud and lost the light. At sermon time, while Squire is in his pew, he gives my gilded name a thoughtful stare. For though low down upon the list, I'm there, in proud and glorious memory. That's my due. Two bleeding years I fought in France for Squire. I suffered anguish that he's never guessed. Once I came home on leave, and then went west. What greater glory could a man desire? Atrocities you told me, in your drunken, boasting mood, how once you butchered prisoners. That was good. I'm sure you felt no pity while they stood, patient and cowed and scared, as prisoners should. How did you do them in? Come, don't be shy. You know I love to hear how Germans die. Downstairs in dugouts, comrade, they cry, then squeal like stoats when bombs begin to fly. And you? I know your record. You went sick when orders looked unwholesome. Then, with trick and lie, you wangled home. And here you are, still talking big and boozing in a bar. To Leonid Massin, 
in Cleopatra. O beauty doomed and perfect for an hour, leaping along the verge of death and night, you show me dauntless youth that went to fight four long years past, discovering pride and power. You die but in our dreams, who watch you fall, knowing that tomorrow you will dance again, but not to ebbing music were they slain, who sleep in ruined graves beyond recall, who following phantom glory, friend and foe, into the darkness that was war must go, blind, banished from desire. O mortal heart, be still, you have drained the cup, you have played your part. Memory When I was young, my heart and head were light, and I was gay and feckless as a colt out in the fields with morning in the may, wind on the grass, wings in the orchard bloom. O oh, thrilling sweet my joy when life was free, and all the paths led from Hawthorne time across the caroling meadows into June. But now my heart is heavy laden. I sit burning my dreams away beside the fire, for death has made me wise and bitter and strong, and I am rich in all that I have lost. O oh, starshine in the fields of long ago, bring me the darkness and the nightingale. Dim wields of vanished summer, peace of home and silence, and the faces of my friends. To a very wise man, fires in the dark you build, tall quivering flames in the huge midnight forest of the unknown. Your soul is full of cities with dead names and blind faced earth bound gods of bronze and stone whose priests and kings and lust-begotten lords watch the procession of their thundering hosts, or guard relentless fanes with flickering swords and wizardry of ghosts. In a strange house I woke, heard overhead hastily thudding feet and a muffled scream. Is death like that? I quaked uncomforted, striving to frame tomorrow in a dream of woods and sliding pools and cloudless day. You know how bees come into a twilight room from dazzling afternoon, then sail away out of the curtained gloom. You understand my thoughts, though when you think you're out beyond the boundaries of my brain, I'm but a bird at dawn that cries, chink, chink, a garden bird that warbles in the rain. And you're the flying man, the speck that steers a careful course far down the verge of a day, halfway across the world. Above the years, you soar. Is death so bad? I wish you'd say. Early Chronology Slowly the daylight left our listening faces. Professor Brown, with level baritone, discoursed into the dusk. Five thousand years he guided us through scientific spaces of excavated history till the lone roads of research grew blurred, and in our ears time was the rumored tongues of vanished races, and thought a chartless age of ice and stone. The story ended, then the darkened air flowered as he lit his pipe, an aureole glowed and wreathed with smoke, the moment's matchlight showed his rosy face, broad brow, and smooth gray hair, backed by the crowded bookshelves. In his wake, an archaeologist began to make assumptions about aqueducts. He quoted Professor Sandstorm's book, and soon they floated through desiccated forests, mangled myths, and, and argued easily round megaliths. Beyond the college garden, something glinted. A copper moon climbed clear above the trees. Some Lydian coin. Professor Brown agrees that copper coins were in that culture minted but as her whitening lay aloft she took, I thought she had a pre-dynastic look. Elegy to Robert Ross Your dexterous wit will haunt us long, wounding our grief with yesterday. Your laughter is a broken song, and death has found you, kind and gay. We may forget those transient things that made your charm and our delight. But loyal love has deathless wings that rise and triumph out of night. 
so in the days to come your name shall be as music that ascends when honor turns a heart from shame o heart of hearts o friend of friends miracles i dreamt i saw a huge gray boat in silence steaming down a canal it drew the dizzy landscape after the solemn world was sucked along with it a streaming landslide of loveliness oh but i rocked with laughter staring and clinging to my treetop for a lake of gleaming peace swept on behind i mustn't wake and then great clouds gathered and burst in spumes of green that plunged into the water and the sun came out on glittering islands thronged with orchards scarlet bloom and rosy bloomed flamingos flashed across the scene oh but the beauty of their freedom made me shout and when i woke i wondered where on earth i'd been the goldsmith this job's the best i've done he bent his head over the golden vessel that he'd wrought a bird was singing but the craftsman's thought is a forgotten language lost and dead he sighed and stretched brown arms his friend came in and stood beside him in the morning sun the gold work glittered that's the best i've done and now i've got a necklace to begin this was at Knossos, in the Isle of Crete. A girl was selling flowers along the street. Devotion to Duty I was near the king that day. I saw him snatch and briefly scan the GHQ dispatch. Thick-voiced, he read it out. His face was grave. This officer advanced with the first wave, and when our first objective had been gained, though wounded twice, reorganized the line. The spirit of the troops was by his fine example most effectively sustained. He gripped his beard, then closed his eyes and said, Bathsheba must be warned that he is dead. Send for her. I will be the first to tell this wife how her heroic husband fell. Ancient History Adam, a brown old vulture in the rain, shivered below his wind-whipped olive trees. Huddling sharp chin on scarred and scraggy knees, he moaned and mumbled to his darkening brain. He was the grandest of them all, was Cain. A lion laired in the hills that none could tire, swift as a stag, a stallion of the plain, hungry and fierce with deeds of huge desire. Grimly thought of Abel, soft and fair, a lover with disaster in his face, and scarlet blossom twisted in bright hair. Afraid to fight, was murder more disgrace? God always hated Cain. He bowed his head, the gaunt wild men whose lovely sons were dead. Sporting Acquaintances I watched old squatting chimpanzee. He traced his painful patterns in the dirt. I saw red-haired orang Yutang, whimsical-faced, chewing a sportsman meditative straw. I'd met them years ago, and half forgotten they'd come to grief. But how I'd never learn, poor beggars. Still, it seemed so rude and rotten to stand and gape at them with never a word. I ventured ages since we met, and tried my candid smile of friendship. No success. One scratched his hairy thigh, while t'other sighed and glanced away. I saw they liked me less than when, on ebbs and downs and cloudless weather, we backed the tetra and got drunk together. What the Captain Said at the Point to Point I've had a good bump round. My little horse refused the brook first time, then jumped at prime and ran out at the double. But, of course, there's always trouble at a double. And then, I don't know how it was, he turned it up at that big hairy fence before the plow, and some young silly pup, I don't know which, near as a toucher knocked me into the ditch, and we finished full of running and quite sound. And anyhow, 
I've had a good bump round. Cinema Hero Oh, this is more than fiction. It's the truth that somehow never happened. Pay your bob and walk straight in, abandoning today. Today is a place outside the picture house. Forget it, and the film will do the rest. There's nothing fine in being as large as life. The splendor starts when things begin to move and gestures grow enormous. That's the way to dramatize your dreams and play the part as you'd have done if luck had starred your face. I'm Rupert from the mountains. Pass the stout. Yes, I'm the Bronco boy we watched tonight that robbed a ranch and galloped down the creek. Moonlight and shattering hooves, O oh, moonlight of the west. Wind in the gum trees, and my swerving mare beating her flickering shadow on the post. I was wild in those fierce days. You saw me fix that saloon. They stared into my face and slowly put their hands up while I stood with dancing eyes, romantic to the world. Things happened afterwards. You know the story. The sheriff's daughter, banishing my head, love at first sight, the escape and making good, to music by Muscagney, and at last, peace, and the gradual beauty of my smile. But that's all finished now. One has to take life as it comes. I've nothing to regret. For men like me, the only thing that counts is the adventure. Lord, what times I've had! God and King Charles, and then my mistress's arms. Tomorrow evening I'm a cavalier. Well, what's the news tonight about the strike? Fancy Dress Some brave awake in you tonight, knocked at your heart. An eagle's flight stirred in the feather on your head. Your wide-set Indian eyes alight above high cheekbones smeared with red. Unveiled cragged centuries and led you the snared wraith of bygone things, wild ancestries of trackless kings, out of the past so men have felt strange anger move them as they knelt, praying to God serenely starred in heavens where tomahawks are barred. Middle Ages I heard a clash and a cry and a horseman fleeing the wood. The moon hid in a cloud. Deep in shadow I stood. Ugly work, thought I, holding my breath. Men must be cruel and proud, jousting for death. With gusty glimmering shone the moon, and the wind blew colder. A man went over the hill, bent to his horse's shoulder. Time for me to be gone. Darkly I fled. Owls in the wood were shrill, and the moon sank red. The Portrait I watch you, gazing at me from the wall. I wonder how you'd match your dreams with mine. If, mastering time's illusion, I could call you back to share this quiet candle shine. For you were young three hundred years ago, and by your looks I guess that you were wise. Come, whisper soft, and death will never know you've slipped away from those calm, painted eyes. Strange is your voice. Poor Ninny, dead so long, and all your pride forgotten like your name. One April morn I heard a blackbird's song, and joy was in my heart like leaves of flame. And so you died before your songs took wing, while Andrew Marvel followed in your wake. Love thrilled me into music. I could sing but for a moment, but for beauty's sake. Who passes? There's a starlit breeze that stirs the glimmer of white lilies in the gloom. Who speaks? Death has his silent messengers, and there was more than silence in this room. While you were gazing at me from the wall, and wondering how you'd match your dreams with mine, if, mastering time's illusion, you could call me back to share your vanished candle shine. Butterflies Frail travelers, deftly flickering over the flowers, or living flowers against the heatless blue of summer days, what sends them dancing through this fiery-blossomed revel of the hours? 
theirs are the musing silences between the enraptured crying of shrill birds that make heaven in the wood while summer dawns awake and there is the faintest winds that hush the green and they are as my soul that wings its way out of the starlit dimness into morn and they are as my tremulous being born to know but this the phantom glare of day wraiths they know not the green leaves in whose earth-haunting dream dimly the forest heaves and voiceless goes the stream strangely they seek a place in love's night memoried hall peering from face to face until some heart shall call and keep them for a breath half mortal hark to the rain they are dead oh hear how death gropes on the shuttered pane phantom the clock has stopped and the winds dropped a candle burns with moon gold flame blank silence whispers at my ears though i've been dead these coffined years you'll never choke my shame dip your quill in clotted ink write i'll quicken you to think in my old fiery alphabet the candle flame upon its wick staggers the timepiece starts to tick and down the dark the wind blows wet good angels help me to forget the dark house dusk in the rain-soaked garden and dark the house within a door creaked someone was early to watch the dawn begin but he stole away like a thief in the chilly star-bright air though the house was shuttered for slumber he had left one wakeful there nothing moved in the garden never a bird would sing nor shake and scatter the dew from the boughs with shy and startled wing but when that lover had passed the gate a quavering thrush began come back come back he shrilled to the heart of the passion plighted man idle in the grey summer garden i shall find you with daybreak in the morning hills behind you there will be rain-wet roses stir of wings and down the wood a thrush that wakes and sings not from the past you'll come but from that deep where beauty murmurs to the soul asleep and i shall know the sense of life reborn from dreams into the mystery of morn where gloom and brightness meet and standing there till that calm song is done at last we'll share the league spread choiring symphonies that are joy in the world and peace and dawn's one star parted sleepless i listen to the surge and drone and drifting roar of the town's undertone till through quiet falling rain i hear the bells tolling and chiming their brief tune that tells day's midnight end and from the day that's over no flashes of delight i can recover but only dreary winter streets and faces of people moving in loud clanging places and i in my loneliness longing for you for all i did to-day and all i'll do to-morrow in the city of intense arteried activities that throb and strive is but a beating down of that suspense which holds me from your arms I am alive only that I may find you at the end of these slow striking hours I toil to spend, putting each one behind me, knowing but this, that all my days are turning toward your kiss, that all expectancy awaits the deep consoling passion of your eyes that keep their radiance for my coming, and their peace for when I find you in my love's release. lovers you were glad tonight and now you've gone away flushed in the dark you put your dreams to bed but as you fall asleep i hear you say those tired sweet drowsy words we left unsaid i am alone but in the windless night i listen to the gurgling rain that veils the gloom with peace 
in whispering of your white limbs in your mouth that storm my throat with bliss the rain becomes your voice and tells me tales that crowd my heart with memories of your kiss sleep well for i can follow you to bless and lull your distant beauty where you roam and with wild songs of hoarded loveliness recall you to these arms that were your home slumber song sleep and my song shall build about your bed a paradise of dimness you shall feel the folding of tired wings and peace will dwell throned in your silence and one hour shall hold summer and midnight in immensity lulled to forgetfulness for where you dream the stately gloom of foliage shall embower your slumbering thought with tapestries of blue and there shall be no memory of the sky nor sunlight with its cruelty of swords but to your soul that sinks from deep to deep through drowned and glimmering color time shall be only slow rhythmic swaying in your breath and roses in the dark and my love the imperfect lover i never asked you to be perfect did i though often i've called you sweet in the invasion of mastering love i never prayed that you might stand unsoiled angelic and inhuman pointing the way towards sainthood like a signpost oh i know the way to heaven was easy we found the little kingdom of our passion that all can share who walk the road of lovers in wild and secret happiness we stumbled and gods and demons clamored in our senses but i've grown thoughtful now and you have lost your early morning freshness of surprise at being so utterly mine you've learned to fear the gloomy stricken places in my soul and the occasional ghosts that haunt my gaze you made me glad and i can still return to you the haven of my lonely pride but i am sworn to murder those illusions that blossom from desire with desperate beauty there shall be no falsehood in our failure since if we loved like beasts the thing is done and i'll not hide it though our heaven be hell you dream long liturgies of our devotion yet in my heart i dread our love's destruction but should you grow to hate me i would ask no mercy of your mood i'd have you stand and look me in the eyes and laugh and smite me then i should know at least that truth endured though love had died of wounds and you could leave me unvanquished in my atmosphere of devils vision i love all things that pass their briefness is music that fades on transient silences winds birds and glittering leaves that flare and fall they fling delight across the world they call to rhythmic flashing limbs that rove and race a moment in the dawn for youth's lit face a moment's passion closing on the cry o beauty born of lovely things that die to a childless woman you think i cannot understand ah but i do i've been wrung with anger and compassion for you i wonder if you'd loathe my pity if you knew but you shall know i've carried in my heart too long this secret burden has not silence wrought your wrong brought you to dumb and wintry middle age with gray unfruitful withering ah the pitiless things i say what do you ask your god for at the end of the day kneeling beside your bed with bowed and hopeless head what mercy can he give you dreams of the unborn children that haunt your soul like loving words unsaid dreams as a song half heard through sleep in early morn i see you in the chapel where you bend before the enhaloed calm of everlasting motherhood that wounds your life i see you humbled to adore the painted miracle you've never understood tender and bittersweet and shy i've watched you holding another's child o oh, childless woman was it then that 
with an instant's cry your heart made young again was crucified forever those poor arms enfolding the life the consummation that had been denied you i too have longed for children ah but you must not weep something i have to whisper as i kneel beside you and you must pray for me before you fall asleep aftermath have you forgotten yet for the world's events have rumbled on since those gagged days like traffic checked a while at the crossing of city ways and the haunted gap in your mind has filled with thoughts that flow like clouds in the lit heavens of life and you are a man reprieved to go taking your peaceful share of time with joy to spare but the past is just the same and war's a bloody game have you forgotten yet look down and swear by the slain of the war that you'll never forget do you remember the dark months you held at the sector at mamets the nights you watched and wired and dug and piled sandbags on parapets do you remember the rats and the stench of corpses rotting in front of the front-line trench and dawn coming dirty white and chill with a hopeless rain do you ever stop and ask is it all going to happen again do you remember that hour of din before the attack and the anger the blind compassion that seized and shook you then as you peered at the doomed and haggard faces of your men do you remember the stretcher cases lurching back with dying eyes and lolling heads those ashen gray masks of the lads who once were keen and kind and gay have you forgotten yet look up and swear by the green of that spring that you'll never forget march nineteen nineteen falling asleep voices moving about in the quiet house thought of feet and a muffled shutting of doors everyone yawning only the clocks are alert out in the night there's autumn smelling gloom crowded with whispering trees looming of oaks that roared in wild wet gales across the park the hollow cry of hounds like lonely bells and i know that the clouds are moving across the moon the low red rising moon the herons call and wrangle by their pool and hooting owls sail from the wood across pale stooks of wheat waiting for sleep i drift from thoughts like these and where to-day was dreamlike build my dreams music there was a bright white room below and someone singing a song about a soldier one hour two hours ago and soon the song will be last night but now the beauty swings across my brain ghost of remembered chords which still can make such radiance in my dreams that i can watch the marching of my soldiers and count their faces faces sunlit faces falling asleep the herons and the hounds september in the darkness and the world i've known all fading past me into peace Prelude to an unwritten masterpiece. You like my bird sung gardens, wings and flowers, calm landscapes for emotion, starlit lawns, and youth against the sunrise. Not profound, but such a haunting music in the sound. Do it once more, it helps us to forget. Last night I dreamt an old recurring scene, some complex out of childhood. Sex, of course. I can't remember how the trouble starts, and then I'm running blindly in the sun down the old orchard, and there's something cruel chasing me, someone roused to a grim pursuit of clumsy anger. Crash! I'm through the fence and thrusting wildly down the wood that's dense with woven green of safety, paths that wind, moss grown from glade to glade, and far behind one thwarted yell. Then silence. I've escaped. That's where it used to stop. Last night I went onward until the trees were dark and huge, and I was lost, cut off from all return by swamps and birdless jungles. I'd no chance of getting home for tea. I woke with shivers, 
thought of crocodiles and crawling rivers. Some day I'll build, more ruggedly than doughty, a dark, tremendous song you'll never hear. My beard will be a snowstorm, drifting whiter on bowed prophetic shoulders, year by year. And some will say, his work has grown so dreary. Others, he used to be a charming writer. And you, my friend, will query, why can't you cut it short, you pompous blighter? Limitations you could crowd them into forty lines. Yes, you can do it once you get a start. All that you want is waiting in your head, for long ago you've learnt it off by heart. Begin. Your mind's the room where you must sleep. Don't pause for rhymes, till twilight wakes you early. The window stands wide open, as it stood when treetops loomed enchanted, for a child, hearing the dawn's first thrushes through the wood warbling. You know the words serene and wild. You've said it all before. You dreamed of death, a dim Apollo and the bird-voiced breeze that drifts across the morning, veiled with showers, while golden weather shines among dark trees. You've got your limitations. Let them sing, and all your life will waken with a cry. Why should you halt when raptured on the wing, and you've no limit but the cloud-flock sky? But some chap shouts, here, stop it, that's been done as God might holloa to the rising sun, and then relent, because the glorying rays reminded him of glinting Eden days, and Adam's trustful eyes as he looks up from carving eagles on his beechwood cup. Young Adam knew his job. He could condense life to an eagle from the unknown immense. Go on, whoever you are. Your lines could be a whisper in the music from the weirs of song that plunge and tumble toward the sea, that is, the uncharted mercy of our tears. I told you it was easy. Words are fools who follow blindly, once they get a lead. But thoughts are kingfishers that haunt the pools of quiet, seldom seen, and all you need is just that flash of joy above your dream. So when those forty platitudes are done, you'll hear a bird note calling from the stream that wandered through your childhood and the sun will strike the old flaming wonder from the waters, and there'll be forty lines not yet begun. Everyone sang. Everyone suddenly burst out singing, and I was filled with such delight as prison birds must find in freedom, winging wildly across the white orchards and dark green fields, on, on, and out of sight. Everyone's voice was suddenly lifted, and beauty came like the setting sun. My heart was shaken with tears, and horror drifted away. Oh, but everyone was a bird, and the song was wordless. The singing will never be done. End of Picture Show by Siegfried Sassoon